Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Chrono Trigger with me, Get Daved. So, I opted to slide in Frog, although it'd be kind of nice to bring Chrono for revenge purposes, but let's not get caught up in that. We got to the Mammon Machine, that lovely contraption. Okay. Uh, that is slightly false. If you transcend time, why are you waiting? Well, that's really incentivizing things. Man, I mean, everybody's gonna be pretty screwed. Unless you kill me. It's like friggin... Season 3 of Sherlock. How are we gonna stop this guy who's memorizing all of the incriminating facts? Oh, we could kill him. Which would be convenient, and everyone wants him dead. Alright, we're gonna use Dork Bomb, cause, you know. Why not? I'm a little underwhelmed by the power of that heal, but we might be okay with that. And we don't have any crazy great offensive options with this crew, which is probably gonna be quite a liability. We have a gauntlet of three bosses, one of which is dangerous. Quite dangerous, actually. Well, let's see. Let's see how this works out. We'll try drop down. Okay. You have my attention. I don't think I've ever used that tech before in my life. This is the vaguely annoying attack, but took it pretty well. Let's just see how the damage compares, because color me interested. Also, if she does that uh, attack that reduces everybody to you know, um, a single hit point, we have Frog Squash and Dino Tail available to us. Yeah. Like this. 4 MP, sign me up. Doink. 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 I mean, maybe you could make the case. There we go. That I should, you know, be healing or something, but I'm not gonna. Don't ask how it got there. Cool. We got a Mega Elixir. It doesn't look like it works anymore. We can see the Mass Immune must have trashed it a bit. But maybe inside it's intact? It's kind of unclear what's happening here. Glad Frog has a haste helm. We're just gonna open with that, just in case. I really want to hedge some bets. This attack is one where you can take a little bit of damage. I mean, it would be nice to open with things to do all, you know, like frog squash and all that, but I'm a little too paranoid. Maybe I should use an Alex or an Magus and then just go into town. You will soon see the one reason this could be a bit of a tricky fight. Okay. I don't think it has anything good. So there you go. It's increasing its attack. You can physically attack it. You can do whatever you want. You can bop it, twist it, turn it, or twirl it. Oh my goodness. I had no idea. Everybody! Masamune absorbs the energy! Let's trash this thing. Ah, uh, that's too bad. I'm gonna operate on the assumption that Boulder Toss won't work, but I'll try it anyway. I don't expect it to succeed.
Yeah. That's fine, I just like it because it gives a lot of damage. This is amazing! So did the Massimune reduce the energy that built up? Eh, maybe. So when it says it remains still, that's when we can just trash it. There's no consequences to what we're doing. Now you can see how underwhelming Triple Kick is. But I did like how these combined. I think we can justify at least a high ether on this one. Both of these previous two fights I consider pretty easy. What we're approaching is much, much worse. And we'll be getting hit with MP Buster and all sorts of annoying things. But again, let's not waste this pleasant moment we're having on just anticipation. Or regret that Chrono's not with us, even though he kind of does have a revenge motivation. It'd be kind of kind of cool if we could let him have that. It's like Cure 1, but the effects are bigger. Um, yeah, let's just keep going for it. I'll get Frog switching to attack mode shortly. He's taking a bit more damage from its magic attacks just because, you know, he's got a haste helm and no armor. I.e. not plus 19 to magic defense. Alright, here we go. No experience points, apparently. Now we stand atop the omen. This one requires a little bit of, uh, attention, and Magus will be a bit of a liability, but we'll do what we can. Hello. No one lives forever? Underrated game. I believe by mercy he means death. That is her own son she's fighting. I don't think she understands that. Despite transcending time and space. Okay, first thing we want to do, most important thing. Charm everything. I think starting with the left hand, actually. Prismatic Helm. Never mind, we wanted the other one first. They counter with all sorts of horrible things. Conveniently, I knew it was coming. Just keeping everybody... Keeping everybody fresh and cool. Because some of these attacks are nasty. He took that one pretty well, though. Prismatic Dress, there you go! So, you can do the Black Omen up to three times. And the Prismatic Dress can be equipped by three characters. So we did it in 1080. We could also go to 680 and do it, or 12,000. Once you do it in a past time, it disappears from all future ones. So, it's a twist on the mechanic we've been using lots and lots. Oh, might as well charm the middle. I think it's a mega elixir. Also, if you don't have Magus in the party, I don't believe you hear this music. 
So that's a cool little twist. Again, you can fight it several times. The Black Omen is also easier to beat subsequently. Note, very much by intention, we are not using any, any attacks that hit everybody. Because that's asking for trouble. Every time you hit those hands, well, I mean, Life Shaver or MP Buster gets sent your way, and that's not a good thing. Welcome, Magus. You are the healer. Ayo's defense is high enough. And great magic defense, too, thanks to items. I'll say this, I've been crapping on Magus, but I'm enjoying his defense values. Because that can do a lot more damage than 97. As we're probably about to see. Yeah, there you go. And even then, Frog actually handled that quite well. <laughs> I wonder how many that's going to take. Don't worry, I can prepare. I have had Halation go off and then right after that we get hit by uh, one of those attack all spells that are so terrible. So, you know, be humble, okay? Even on level 99, there's the slightest risk of a party wipe if the timing works out truly terribly. That's fine. You're safe as long as you don't queue in everyone's commands at once. Like, if you haven't been optimizing speed like I have been, and you queued everyone's attacks, you're a lot more likely to, you know, suffer one of those. Mm, hi, Aether. I'm not made of ethers, everybody. Now you can all see the fullness of my cheap skatery. Anyway, when you go through the Black Omen subsequent times, a lot of the stuff is picked over. I guess in that sense it does transcend time and space. And a lot of the enemies don't reappear. Panels all stay dead. That wasn't so bad. Goodbye, Zeal. I liked it better when it was the Ocean Palace, personally. So we've inadvertently woken him up now. That's fine. We were meaning to kill him anyway. Although, no, not right this minute. Also note we're at the 12,000 BC timeline. Despite the fact that we did not enter it then. What happened to your face? Life's candle. How unnecessarily poetic, Magus. And you've all seen this before, but this is not to be the last video. Perhaps the second last. There actually is quite simple turning back through the time gate located to your left. Once more onto the br- oh, hey, uh, you know, we don't have to do this.
one other note, if you take the Epoch to fight Lavos, you actually smash the Epoch into him, um, intentionally. And that destroys the outer shell, so we could have skipped all that. You know, from a few videos ago. I guess I should take the Epoch. Wait. Yay! Alright, we are past the fated hour, now at the final battle, the last chapter of the game. But I kind of skipped two things. So we're gonna Bork track and get them. There's two gemstones left. Ooh, actually, I'm gonna do one other thing that I forgot before. We'll test out a theory. Even though it's going to take more time travel to do this. I was told that there's a capsule behind Toma's gravestone. Thank you, comment section. I found a lot of things that I uh, didn't know about in previous playthroughs. Mostly locations of just a couple obscure tabs. My goodness, it was a speed capsule. The best kind. She's got an artificial speed plus three. I think for the final battle I'm going to take the, the main trio. So I'll, I'll pump up Luca's stats here. Never mind she's not in the power D. Alright, anyway we were talking about gemstones. So we're going to go to the Donatoro Mountains. And we're going to go to 65 million BC. Seems simple enough. I misaimed. And we are just going to take the quick way through every battle we encounter here. Kill everything. Ah. Okay, he's got um, a hammer, which actually makes it kind of slow to take him out. Just out of curiosity, can we kill him with dark matter? This is kind of like our version of Will It Blend. Yes. Yes, we can kill him. We do have to make a little bit of a hike. We're actually almost there, though. Ugh. This screen you have to get through quickly. It is possible just to... Well, you know what? It doesn't really matter anymore. Ugh. So close and yet so far. You know, we had a lot of fun last time. Let's do it one more time. Seventeen sixty four damage is pretty good. And I mean spamming dark matter to beat Lavos is a somewhat legitimate strategy. I would recommend doing it with Luminaire instead, but I think I might have to switch to have Frog in the front of the party. So we're just having rocks thrown at us. There we go. There you go. He's done it. Unfortunately, I think we're pretty much at the midway point, so... We'll go past Mr. Mountains are nice. Really? I wouldn't mind if they just recognized that they were throwing their lives away. Or if they had some sort of escape spell. Oh, 
Also, I just want to check one thing real quick. How close is Robo to the... Oh, he still hasn't leveled up. Yeah, and probably won't. If he gets one more level, his hit points will end in 9, and then we can give him the Crisis Arm, and any time he's at full life, he'll do more damage. We've been over this. There we go, I went around that encounter. We're on a roll. Ugh. Every time. Every time I speak. Alright, I'm predicting a crit. Every time I speak. Also, I haven't been using, like, Prism Specs this entire time. It's a fantastic accessory. You should really consider using it all the time. But me and my micromanagement. Also, I'd be curious in, in knowing... I would be curious in knowing the splits. For, uh... There we go. Whether it was faster for me to turn around or not. Because we can ride the wind! Alright, and now for the silver rock. Then I'll try to show them off quickly. Uh, all the rock techs. I've shown a hyper crazy laser. But I don't think I've shown Dark Eternal. Or, well, lots of them. Hey, man. We don't actually want to change his name. Frog is fine. Although, maybe it should be Glenn now. There we go. A Sliver Gemstone. Good night. If you want to rename the Epoch, you can also go to the Keepers Down as well. Okay. The Silver Gemstone I don't remember being super great. Now that I've talked it up. You get the Black Gemstone. And Robo gets the gold one. No, did I remember that wrong? Okay, Marl gets the gold one. For sure that's right. I think it's her chrono and... No, I don't know what I'm talking about. I can do this, everybody. I'm gonna need you to believe in me, though. Was it all a dream? Alright, fine. Okay. I'm gonna swap in Robot first. We'll just do a quick encounter in the hunting range, because why not? And we'll show you Spin Strike. Slight overkill for these guys. I have a bad feeling for this guy. Eh, not too bad. Par for the course for many of these, though. That one I don't think is quite good enough, given that you have to sacrifice an accessory slot to use it. I mean, we can do that sort of damage to everybody at will. Alright. Next... ...is this trio. And I'm going to show two different moves that they have. Because I haven't shown off Antipode Bomb 3 yet, which is not too shabby. And I'm interested in how its power compares to Dark Eternal, or Eternal Darkness of the Spotless Mind. Eh? A bit better. Mm, 
I'm gonna try to fight the exact same enemy and we can see how we measure up against it. Mm, yoink. Made cheaper by the golden stud on Luca. Boom. Actually, I think I have shown this, but that's fine. Pretty close. Alright, and then the last one, Grand Dream. I forget exactly what the party is, because I thought Robo had to be in there. Oh, Master Mune. Okay. It does need Robo, but I guess he couldn't equip it or something. I don't know. Just gonna mess around with the interface for a bit. Oh, my goodness. One get day point for every missed click. This one I've always found to be a slightly underwhelming one, but you'll see. He uses, like, healing abilities. A rise as an offensive ability. So, the lower you are on life, the more damage it does, I think. You know, just so you don't laugh too hard at it. And Robo never gets a chance to, you know, show us his punch. Also, I think I did gloss over kind of my favorite triple tech from the entire game. It's certainly not the best one, but for, in terms of bang for your buck... Alright, we'll wait for a new and try to take it out that way. Oh, dang it. That's one of the spots the new can come. Yeesh. I've blown it. We'll never see the new, we'll never see Frost Arc. I failed you. I'm just kidding, we'll find someone really strong to smash. Or one of these guys. We'll see how Ice Water has scaled with damage as well. It's like X-Strike meets Ice Sword makes the finish flag briefly. Anyway, it's a relatively accessible tech that I didn't show off at all during the game, but uh, two thumbs up. And we will not see how Ice Water has progressed. Thanks for watching, everybody. In the next episode, now that you've, you've seen it all, we'll be taking on Lavos. See you then.